More than houses and land, I love you. More than my eyes can see. More than what people could ever give me, I love you, Jesus. More than the houses and land you gave me, more than my prayer request. More than the gifts and anointing on my life, I love you, God. And I love you more than what I'm asking for. Lord, I love you more than what I'm asking for. Lord, I love you more than what I'm asking for. Lord, I love you more than what I'm asking for. In more than houses and land, I love you more than my eyes can see. More than what people will ever give me, I love you, Jesus. More than the houses and land you gave me, more than my prayer request. More than the gifts and anointing on my life, I love you, God. And I love you more than what I'm asking for. Lord, I love you more than what I'm asking for. And Lord, I love you more than what I'm asking for. Lord, I love you more. Than what I'm asking for. Cause you are more than I can imagine. You're more than I've ever needed. You're exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask or ever think. You're more than I could imagine. You're more than I've ever needed. You're exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask or ever think. And I love you more than what I'm asking for. Jesus, I love you more than what I'm asking for. And Savior, I love you more. Than what I'm asking for. Say that I love you more than what I'm, what I'm asking for. For yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Wealth Channel, Brother Ricky, a gracious host. And I say, don't you love God more than anything that you're asking for? I'm telling you, he's sweeter than the honey and the honeycomb. He's a great savior. He is the lily of the valley. He is the bright and morning star. He is the rose of Sharon. He is the great I am. He is better than he's better than me than I've ever been to myself. He's a doctor. When you're sick, he's a lawyer in a courtroom. I tell you, he's bread when we're hungry. He's water when we're thirsty. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. And that's why I love him more. I love him more than anything. He could possibly give me because everything I ever needed, ever wanted, ever desired, ever even dreamt of, my God, he ain't meet me there. He beat me there. And how about you this morning? Do you have that same joy? I say, do you have that same joy? Do you have that <laughs> same joy this morning? Uh, welcome to the Wealth Channel. Today, we're going to talk about this idea, and that's the idea of how to get sought after in the marketplace and how to signal your intentions, so serve people without wanting anything from them. And then how to be selected by people to do business with you, how to be selected by people to move into a higher level of life. The pattern is you signal people, you serve, you signal your intentions, you serve people without wanting anything back. And then you select who you want to be around or you're selected by people and you let them know whether or not you will receive their selection, all right? So this is the process of kings and queens. This is how we behave. 
this is how this is how we do it this is how we do it the way we do it is not the way the world does it the world bogarts their way in the people lives through what solicitation the world is consistently soliciting people trying to impose their will on people but the problem with a person is that the mind who is convinced against his will is of the same persuasion still in other words the world produces a lot of people who go along with stuff why because they feel like i got to like I, this is just what i gotta do but it's not voluntarily it's not it doesn't have power see the reason that god will never take a man or a woman's will is because god doesn't get anything out of it if you don't love him. if you don't love god he doesn't get anything out of anything that you do everything that we do if we don't love god it's plastic it's phony doesn't have no real depth to it if we don't love god and everything that we do for each other it don't mean nothing if we don't love each other the bible says love is stronger than death and greater love hath no man than this than a man will lay down his life for a friend he said you are my friends if you do whatsoever i tell you to do so let's go into the book of ruth and i want to read you a story an amazing love affair between a woman and her daughter-in-law a woman named naomi and her daughter-in-law named Ruth. And I want to show you this pattern of how to signal your intentions, how to serve a person without any want anything back in return, and then how to be selected and how to end up at the top of the food chain and leaving an amazing, everlasting posterity to your kids and your kids' kids. If you'll follow this amazing example of this marvelous queen, and her name is Ruth, and her mother-in-law, who is basically her mother, named Naomi. So let's look at this amazing love affair that's taking place right here in the book of Ruth, chapter one. And let me give you some of the backstory. And then we'll discuss signaling, serving, and selecting. All right. See, so now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Malan and Chilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she left and her two sons. And then, and she was left, I should say, and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelled in there about 10 years. And Malan and Chilion died also, both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons. And, and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how the Lord had visited her, his people and given them bread. All right, so now here's Ruth. She has her two daughters, Orpah, and she has, I'm sorry, Naomi. She has her two daughters, Orpah and Ruth. And here they are, they're three widows. Her husband died and both of these young ladies, both of their husbands are dead. Three widows, okay? And they're heading back to Bethlehem, Judah. They're heading back to where they come from. Why? Because it had been a famine in that land. That's why they got little and bounced and went to Moab. They went to Moab because there was some food in Moab. However, now they have no ties left in Moab. She doesn't, at least. Ruth and, um, Ruth and um, I mean, uh, Naomi doesn't have any more ties in Moab because her husband is dead. Now, these young ladies, they are from Moab, Ruth and Orpah. So they from, that's where they from. That's their used to zone. That's what they're used to. And when it's time for you to really move up to another level, I guarantee you 100% of the time, God is about to take you out of your used to zone. The problem is that people call the used to zone their comfort zone. And I'm telling you, this is the words to use. The reason I'm doing a, a free class Tuesday, this Tuesday coming up on the 24th, about $100 million words. The reason is because words change all of your behavior. When you understand a word, it it describe it take it sends you in a different direction if you understand the real meaning of a word, and when you say I'm comfortable and I, I really need to get out of my comfort zone, and you hear me say this over and over again, that is not even true for ninety nine point nine percent of the people who say I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone because they're not comfortable. Are you listening to me? It's not comfortable when you work eight to twelve hours a day and you barely see your kids. That's nothing comfortable about that. It's nothing comfortable when you live in a neighborhood where um, you got to keep your doors locked at night. There's nothing comfortable about that. There's nothing comfortable when you're in a relationship and you got to walk on eggshells all the time. And because you and the person you're talking to 
don't really understand how to communicate with one another. So it's not a comfortable situation. It's just that people compromise and then they get used to something. But the word compromise is never in the Bible, one single page anywhere in the Bible. And the idea of compromising is not a Bible principle. The idea of adjusting is a Bible principle, not compromising. Compromises are losers. Compromises at the top of the bottom. Compromises are the best of the worst. Compromises when you win, you still lose. Why? Because you have compromised whatever the value is that you should have stuck to and just paid the price for, for, for keeping the value that you have. That's a biblical value. When you have biblical values, just be willing to die for them. And, um, and, and it is what it is. Why? Because whatever it is that God got for you, if you stick to biblical values, you will get everything God got for you. And that's all that really matters in life. That we get everything God got for us, whatever it is, in whatever area of life it is that we're moving in. So I'm going to show you the difference between somebody that compromised and somebody who did what? Adjusted to the situation because we have these two young ladies. So watch what happens. So Ruth is about, uh, Naomi is about to give them a presentation. To, so she's really ready to leave and go back home and she doesn't want to burden these young ladies. So watch what Ruth says. Watch this presentation that um, Naomi, I should say, gives them. All right. And she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return into the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how the Lord had visited his people and given them bread. Wherefore, she went out of the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her. And they went on their way to return to the land of Judah. And Naomi said, here's Naomi's presentation to her two daughters to see if somebody's really a ride or die who's willing to adjust or somebody is a compromiser and they really want to go back. So let's see what Naomi says. And then no, Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, she said, go return each to you to, she said, go return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as ye have dealt with the dead. In other words, you was good to my sons and uh, God bless you. All right. But this is a higher level here. You ain't ready for this jelly. So, you know, y'all just gone on back to the crib. All right. She says, the Lord grants you that you may find rest, uh, each of you, in the house of her husband. Uh, then she kissed them and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said unto her, surely we will return unto thee. They, both of them, said unto her, surely we will return unto thee uh, and uh, unto thy people. And Naomi said, no, I'll turn again, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb? that she may have husbands, that may be your husbands. She said, turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. And if I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight, should also should I, uh, should I also bear sons? She said, and would you tarry for them till they were grown? Would you stay for them? But uh, will you stay for them for having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. And they whipped and they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth played unto her. All right, so let's start out. Let's talk about these two signals. All right, we have two young ladies here, Orpah and we have Ruth. And we have Naomi. Naomi gives them a presentation to get rid of them. See, the problem with you all who are trying to make it in the marketplace and in life is that <clears throat> you should start your conversations out at the intersection of no. You should really tell a person right from the beginning <clears throat> that this is going to require some work. And if you're not interested in this work, this is going to require some heartache. This is going to require some blood, sweat and tears. This is going to require an amazing amount of sacrifice. And if you're not interested in that, then you should go home. All right. This is the presentation that Naomi is given in love. She's not mean spirited, but she's letting them know, hey, listen, the chances of you getting married with me are slim. OK, the chances of you finding another husband are slim. You're young. I'm older. I'm definitely not going to find another husband. I'm just going to go back to the crib where I come from. I'm going back to my land and whatever the Lord got for me, he got for me. All right. Y'all been good to me. Y'all been a blessing. All right. So go ahead on and enjoy the rest of your life. All right. She's giving them a presentation to get rid of. them. You see, the problem with people in the marketplace is that you give people presentations trying to go along with them. But you don't tell them about. What, what the difficulties are and what it is that they need to do and what their involvement would have to be and what their commitment would have to be if they want to kick it with you. And, and that's the problem. You know why? Because that sends out a signal. But the signal that you send is a signal of desperation. The signal that you send is a signal that I'll just let anybody get down with me. The signal that you send when you won't let people know 
what your standards are, when you won't let people know what you'll put up with, what you ain't putting up with, what you won't be honest with the person from the beginning and let them know that you got to roll up your sleeves. This is how we get down. And if you faint of heart, then you don't want to hang out around him. All right. Because why? Because we, you know, that's the way it is. Then you would have lasting relationships. Why? Because that signal is a strong signal. All right. Today's lesson is signal, serve, and then select who it is that you want around you. Or your signal will be so strong until people who are of greater status will select you. What? But they'll select you. You won't have to ask them for no job. and approve it to you in a few seconds here uh, with the lie of uh, Ruth and uh, Naomi. So she sends this signal out to her two daughters. Uh, who are basically her daughters. They're her daughters-in-law. So both of them at first say, yeah, we're going with you. We are both going with you. But when she sends this strong signal out, then uh, I don't think y'all really want to come with me. One of them says, let's just kiss and say goodbye. Goodbye. So Orpa, she kisses her. What? Goodbye. She's like, yeah. I got to think about that. She's like, what the heck? Um, Where well, you talking to me? I ain't gonna never have no kids. Where well, you talking to me? It looked like uh, I've been opening up my own website, Charlotte Webs. It'd be Charlotte Webs, Webs all over me before I get another man. Uh, she got to thinking about what it, she got to thinking about that presentation. And she was like, uh, uh, uh. So the difference between Orpa and Ruth is that Ruth, she made a decision. Orpa, she made a choice. See, the difference, the signals that you send out, there's a big difference between a choice and a decision. See, a decision, it means D-E. The word decide means D-E of or from, and side means to cut off. So when you make a decision, you cut off all other possibilities of doing something. That's why people who make decisions are very successful. We're decisive, meaning what? We cut off all other possibilities. And when you cut off all other possibilities, you only have one focus. And the focus on, is on what? What you decided to do. When you make a choice, that means that you don't really mean what you said. A choice means that maybe I will, maybe I won't. So a choice is not a covenant. A covenant means that is what Ruth is about to say. Her first, her sister, Orpa, she makes a choice. She doesn't make a decision. Why? Because you cannot be talked out of your decisions but you can be talked out of your choices. Why? Because your choice is just looking for a way out. All right, let me explain it to you again. I'm talking today about signaling, serving, and selecting, how to be sought after in the marketplace. People seek after you when you make a what? A decision, not a choice. All right, I just watched last night. I watched a bunch of fights with Muhammad Ali uh, before I went to bed. And, uh, and I was thinking about Muhammad Ali. I went to his funeral. I took my daughter. I took two of my actors to Muhammad Ali's funeral. And I told him, I said, it's the closest you're going to ever get to seeing a king being buried. And um, and it was just it was just an amazing day to see people who admired this man from all over the world. But why did they admire Ali so much? It's because he made a decision back in, what, 67, when he was a champ, heavyweight champ of the world. He made a decision that he wasn't going to fight in the Vietnam War. So he sent a real strong signal. He was hated and cussed out and talked about and uh, the, the N-word all over the world and all that sort of a thing. Why? Because they didn't like him taking a stance. All right. He said, I'm not going to fight no Vietnamese. I ain't got no beef with them. He said, I do have a beef with how I'm getting treated right here in the United States in this racist country. Are y'all trying to treat me as a man? Treat me like less than a man. Now you want me to go kill some people I ain't even got no beef with. And uh, because y'all on this communist trip, y'all tripping everybody a communist who you can't gangster. You can't, can't, you can't gangster the land and take their stuff and they fight back. And, uh, and all of a sudden, now you act like they're some type of threat because the United States will go and gangster people's land. They've been doing that stuff, you know, uh, they, they gangstered us over here. So the United States has been some gangsters from day one, ever since they came to this country and set foot on, they gangstered the, the natives out of their land. How the hell are you going to, how the hell are you going to come to a land that's already discovered and discovered? Are you hearing me? And then put Christopher Columbus and make him a hero. Christopher Columbus is a thug, just like everybody else that came over here and took some people and, and got their land and gangsted them out their land. Everybody came over here was a thug. They came over here and took the land of the folks who already had the land. So miss me with all that nonsense. Don't give me all that mall. Don't, don't give me all that stuff like I'm supposed to be admiring people. They came over here and gangsted somebody else's land and then gangsted my parents and, and drugged us over here. So miss me with all that. All right. So the signal that you send out means that that's what you stand for. And that means that what? 
It's not a choice. It's a decision, meaning that it ain't if that's how it is. It ain't nothing else to talk about. Are you listening to me? See, Orpa, she made a choice. She didn't make a decision. So as soon as Ruth, as soon as Naomi started explaining to Orpa, listen, it's going to be tough, baby. You know, you probably ain't going to never get a husband. You know, you definitely, I definitely ain't got no husband to, to hook you up with. I ain't got to hook up. And so it's, it's probably going to be tough. You know, if I was you, I'd just go back home. So since she was thinking in the back of her mind, you know, I really don't want to go anyway. Her presentation that Naomi gave her, it got rid of her. Listen, if you want to make a lot of money, if you want to make it in the marketplace, be so frank with people right up front until you get rid of the people who, who don't make decisions. Get rid of them. All right. Say things to them on purpose. Let them know. And then you'll find out who makes decisions, who makes choices. You'll find out who operates in contracts and who operate in covenants. Because a covenant is one thing, a contract is something else. A covenant is a is a strong signal. A contract is a weak signal. A contract means that you and I sign something. And now we both got some paperwork on each other. So now I know you can't cheat me and I can't cheat you. But it's not made out of what, what the word understanding means in law. The word understanding in law, it means that I appreciate something, I acknowledge it, and I accept it. I appreciate it, I acknowledge it, and I accept it. It's a pleasure to do it. I'm doing it on my own fruition. I have no doubts about this whatsoever. I'm in this thing for life, and I'm signing it with the ink pen, but I'm writing it with blood. My heart is in this thing. So that's what a covenant is. A covenant is that my heart is in something. It's not just the idea that we just sign some papers. It's not just the idea that we're having a, a, a verbal conversation. It means that the only thing that's going to stop this from happening is one of us got to die. All right. Somebody's blood going to be shed for this thing not to go through. All right. Other than that, we stomp down like four flat tires. That's what Ruth told her. Now watch what Ruth says. It's, big, it's a big difference between the signal that Ruth sends and the signal that Orpah sends. But I'm teaching you all today how to signal your intentions, how to serve people, and then be selected at the highest levels of life in the marketplace. Okay? So here we are. And watch what Ruth says. Ruth says this. So, so her daughter, Orpah, she kissed her mother goodbye. She's like, all right, God bless y'all. Peace in the Middle East. Y'all take care. I'm going to miss y'all. All right? Uh, I'll tell y'all this. This is funny. It's real funny. In my church I used to go to in Chicago years ago. Our church, we had we we um, had a choir. <clears throat> and and on one we, uh, we my church is on the west side of Chicago. I would go there all the time, day in and day out for years. And then we had some reconstruction on the church, and we had to start going to the church on the south side. So my friends on the west side, they showed up whenever they got ready. And I didn't like it. I started calling them out on it. I was like, hey, listen. I've been coming to church on the way over here on the west side, like an hour away from where I live and picking up people and dropping off folks and all kinds of things and happy to do it. Why? Because it's a privilege to be able to go in some place and, and, and listen to some good preaching and teaching and stuff. So I wasn't complaining about it. I said, but when it came time for y'all to come over here to, to the south side, y'all been coming like you got a choice. Like you act like it ain't like like you got a choice in the matter. You act like and I was mad. I didn't like it. And I told him. We had choir rehearsal meeting. I said, I don't like half-hearted service. I don't like it. I don't like feeling like I'm being used. All right. I can go to church anywhere I want to go to church. All right. I don't have to ride way over here to church. And then y'all just decide y'all want to come and you get ready. And when it's convenient for you and all that sort of thing. I'm like, no, we all got to be down with this thing. This can't be no half-hearted kind of stuff. I got to, you got to be just as committed to me as I am to you. What's up with all this half-baked stuff? All right. So then we had a conversation. And, uh, and I said, plus, we, you know, this the way a choir goes is people ought to be able to sing this in a choir. So there's like, Brother Ricky, you, you're going a little too far now. I said, no, we have people in the choir that can't sing. I'm like, why do you want to be in the choir if you can't sing? Why don't you just be an usher, a deacon, or, or a preacher, or do something else? Why are you up here all off key, messing up all the songs and all? We got to do the song 25 times because you tone deaf and all that. You ain't supposed to be in a choir if you tone deaf. All right. You ain't supposed to be no usher if you don't know how to smile. You ain't supposed to be no trustee if you can't count. All right. What's your name, sister? My name is Sister Happy. I'm like, what you do? I'm on a trustee board. I'm like, praise the Lord. Girl, can you count? Of course I can. Well, let me see you count then. Count to 10. Let me see. 1, 20, 13, 60. I'm like, what? 1, 20, 13, 65. Now, you got a beautiful smile, girl, but you can't count to 10. What the hell did you do? How did you get on the trustee board? I tell you what, you fired, but you got a really beautiful smile. Move on over there and be on the usher board. You want to be the first face everybody see? 
All right, all right. You ain't got to count to ten to be on the usher board. Just do what it is that you're supposed to be doing. All right. So I'm having a very frank conversation with them about this. I say, so if y'all ain't gonna stop laughing, I say, so if y'all ain't gonna change these policies, then I'm out of here. So you know what they told me? They told me just what Orpa just got through telling Naomi in the Bible. They said, "See you later, bro." <laughs> And Sarah, 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 ceremoniously kicked me out the choir. But you know what I felt like? I've been thrown out of better place. <laughs> I was like, I'm not gonna keep one of all this mess. I've been coming to church all the way on the other side of the city. We got half the folks that did singing the folks that can't even sing in the choir. People trying to convince me all kind. I'm like, I ain't here for that. I'm like, you know what? We just agree to disagree. I love you all, and I, I just, I just created my own. Uh, <laughs> I just created, I said, I tell you what, I just created an ensemble and everybody in the ensemble can sing. We had a cold blooded ensemble, like world class. Why? Because if you're going to be singing, you ought to be able to sing, right? If you're going to be ushering, you ought to be able to usher. Send signals to people and let them know that you're not going to sit around with a whole bunch of confusion and be involved in what a whole lot of people who just tripping and just want to impose their will, just want to do anything. God requires excellence in everything it is that we do. Are you listening to me? God ain't with that crap. Are you hearing me? Let me tell you how, how serious God is about the way we do stuff. When they used to move the Ark of the Covenant of God, he told the Levites that y'all go in front, blow horns and trumpets and all that sort of thing. Get the praise going first before y'all start moving the Ark of the Covenant of God. Y'all go in front of everything, and he it's a pattern way of doing this. So they had one dude who touched the Ark of the Covenant of God who wasn't supposed to touch it, and he dropped dead. Are you listening to me? And David was like, Lord, what's going on? You know, why? Why are you killing folk and all that sort of thing? We're supposed to be rejoicing. He said, go back and read about what I told y'all to do, the protocol of how you're supposed to move the ark. Then David went back and read what, well, how it's supposed to go down. He said, oh, the Levites supposed to be out here singing. You know, singers, you ain't got no Levites out here singing, praising the praises, what I do, what I want to be close. God's like, what they, no, 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 player. That ain't how this go. Get the guys out there that can sing. It ain't no big deal because you can sing. That just mean what? You're supposed to be singing because you can sing. So you get your butt up there and do your work and get the praise on, get everybody pumped up so we can go out here and make a boom, boom, boom in the zoom, zoom. You dig what I'm saying? So that's just a job, just like every other job is a job. But you might be a great singer, but you can't count to five, all right? You dig what I'm saying? So we don't want you back in the back messing all the money up. Just sing out there in the front. And when and don't you dare come back here behind these closed doors where we count this money. <laughs> <laughs> just do whatever it is God told you to do. And when you're dealing with people, send a strong signal out to people that you might not be cut out for this. All right. And if it causes friction or if it causes a separation, separate, deal with the friction, but don't have no fake peace with people. Why? Because that's a wrong signal to send. And what does it do? It breeds contempt, resentment, chaos, malice, envy, all of the crazy works of the flesh that come along with what? Fake arrangements with folks. Why? Because right from the beginning, you can just come clean and let them know this is how we get down. If you down, you down. If you ain't, you ain't. Either you in or you out, one or the other, because that's what decisions do. And that way you don't have all this nonsense later on, because right from the beginning, everybody got a, a clear understanding. That's the way Naomi did a presentation to her two daughters. And one of them said, OK, I got your signal. It came through loud and clear. I need to bounce. Why? Because I wasn't really serious when I said I was coming. That's Orpah. All right. Because her mother-in-law talked her out of it. When you make a decision about your posterity, can't nobody talk you out of it. Watch what happened with Ruth. This is two women right here. And you see the one of them attitude and you see the other one's attitude. But this is what Ruth said. She said, and Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. She said, for whither thou goest, I go. She said, and where thou lodgest, I lodge. And thy people shall be my people. And thy God, my God. Then she said, where thou diest, I'll die. And she said, where thou buried, I'll be. Uh, she said, and, and I will be buried. She said, the Lord do so to me. And more also, if aught but death um, part thee and me. All right. So she told him, man, go back to y'all people. Go back to y'all gods. Ruth had observed so much about Naomi until she said, the Lord. This is a Moabite. All right. She said, the Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, right now. I said the Lord. She know about the Lord. She said, she said, the Lord do more to me if I depart from you. She said, nothing but death. She said, God killed me. 
if I break right now. She said, if I bounce right now, if I get little right now, if I run off on you right now, I just let me drop dead right now and let the, the Lord kill me. She's a, a Moabite. Well, how she know about the Lord? How she know about God? How she know about the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Because she's observed it in Naomi. Naomi is a walking Bible. Naomi's behavior is so outstanding. And to Ruth says, wherever you live, I want to live where you live. All right. Why? Because she is selecting Naomi because Naomi is sending serious signals. What? Of amazing love. Do you know what Naomi's name means? Naomi, just her name alone. Look, look, look. Naomi's name, it means pleasant and gentle. That's what Naomi's name means. Naomi is a pleasant person, a gentle person. And Ruth is like, you're the most gentle, the most pleasant person I know on the whole face of the earth. I would rather kick it with you and never even, if I never even had another child or had another husband, I'm not going to let you out of my sight. I'm going to die with you. I'm going to live with you the rest of however many days. It ain't nothing separating me from you but death. Can you imagine what the marketplace would be like if the signal that we sent out to people is that I'm stomped down with you like four flat tires. You mean way more to me than any amount of money. You mean way more than me than any amount of prestige. You mean way more than me than how people view me. You mean way more than me than any of that superficial stuff. Can you imagine what life would be like if we had the attitude of Ruth? Ruth is a soldier. Ruth then went down in history as one of the most important people in the history of time. Why? Because Ruth really gets it. She so admires Naomi. So my question to you and, and myself today is, are we sending a signal out to people? that's so strong, that we are so peaceful and so gentle. And to that person would be absolutely crazy to try to part ways. I want to ask you that question. Is that the way your wife feels about you? Is that the way your husband feels about you? Is that the way your children feel about you? Is that the way your parents feel about you? Is that the way your business colleagues feel about you? Is that the way even, even your doggone enemies know about you? Do they know that you are what? Gentle and peaceful and the apex of, of generosity and the apex of gentleness and the apex of peacefulness. Do they know that? Because people observe your behavior and they do what? Your behavior is a strong signal. I'm talking to you today about this idea. Signaling, serving, and selecting. Naomi has sent out an amazing signal to her daughter Ruth and Ruth is sending an amazing signal back to Naomi. She's letting her know, I am with you until one of us die. You couldn't talk me out of this if you wanted to. If, when you have that attitude, Man, you could sell your product so good. You'd be sought after in the marketplace so much because the person, listen, the person understands this about you. In this marketplace, when you go out and you're dealing with people, it's not so important that they believe what you're saying. It's just important that you believe what you're saying. Are you hearing me? When you believe what you're saying, the person who God wants you to hook up with, they'll believe you too. Are you listening to me? The main, but people talk about things and they don't even believe what they're saying. And people can feel that when you're talking. Why? Because you haven't even given what you're talking about serious consideration. You haven't given what you're talking about uh, uh, serious. You you ain't you ain't even down what you're talking about because the signal that you send is weak. I had somebody called me yesterday, a business colleague of mine. Well, not really a business colleague of mine. Somebody I know and we're friendly, so he has my personal number and I like him. You know, so he called me and he said, "Rick, I got something I want you to come and see." I said, "What is it?" So he said, um, well, I don't really understand all of it, but um, the president of the company, you can come and learn from him. I said, brother, let me be real frank with you. I'm not interested in meeting no presidents and no companies who I don't know. He was like, huh? I said, I don't I said, I don't have time for that, brother. I said, we our conversations in the business, in the marketplace, they got to have they got to have juice. I don't have I have zero time to waste. You're my friend. So I'm about to eat some dinner, some lunch here, and I'm, I'm talking to you because you're my friend. You got my personal phone number. So I answered the phone. You called me yesterday and I returned all my phone calls. All right. And because but I don't have the same attitude I had coming up and didn't understand the marketplace. The attitude that I have now is that when I'm discussing things with people, it's got to make sense. I, I don't have time to waste. You know, I'm not going to let people's emergencies become my urgencies and people casually call me about things that they're not even fully involved in. And then expect to have my attention. You do not have my attention. And I will tell you right from the beginning, you do not have my attention because you ain't got your stuff together. Are you listening to me? 
You're not, you're, your stuff is not together. You're not, you don't even have your own presentation together. How dare you call me with a half baked conversation, a half baked presentation that's not even together. You don't even know what you're talking about, but you want to get me involved in what you're talking about. That's a very weak signal. It's a very lazy signal. It's a very selfish signal. It's a very, it's a signal that you feel entitled. Like you feel entitled, like because we know each other, that I should just come and listen to whatever it is that you're talking about. Well, the answer to that is no. So I asked the gentleman, I said, just tell me what you're talking about. He said, well, I don't really understand it. I said, so then he gave me a little bit of some information. I said, I, I said, tell me enough to make me want to find out whatever else it is that you're talking about. He said, well, why don't you just send one of your representatives? Now he's getting a little mad at me. He said, why don't you just send one of your representatives, Rick, and they can help you. I said, I'm not coming and I'm not sending a representative. All right. I said, he said, well, you know what? Maybe this is just not for you. I said, well, we both agree with that. Okay. Why? Because you all listen to me good. Enough of these fake relationships. All right. Enough of these frivolous conversations. Why? Because you don't have no time to waste. I'm not talking about you think you better than anybody else. I'm talking about when a person comes to you, they better have their stuff together. And when you come to somebody, you better have your stuff together. Why? Because it's a weak signal. When you send out a signal, I don't even know what I'm talking about. But I want you to get involved in what I don't even know what I'm talking about. I ain't, I ain't even studied what I'm talking about. And I want you to get involved in it. That's a very weak signal. All right. It's a weak signal. And it's a very it's, a, it's not the right attitude. There is no humility involved in that. And it's a fantasy world. The stuff used to work back in the 30 years ago when people did that stuff. Hey, just come to a meeting, man. Don't worry about nothing. You'll find out everything you want to find out at the meeting. Well, that stuff is tired. That's been played out. That doesn't work in a marketplace. That, that does not work in a marketplace. In a marketplace, when you approach people, you pretty much shouldn't even be having to approach the person yourself. It ought to be your clients that told the person about you. You really should be introduced to people before you even start talking to them. You shouldn't even be doing sales presentations. You know, like, hey, I'm trying to sell you something. Hey, I'm trying to get you involved in something. That's not how the marketplace goes today. Why we are in the, in the internet era, the first person that should speak for you should be the person who you already did some business with. All right. Somebody you already helped. They should be speaking on your behalf to the person that you're talking to. Whoever you're talking to, they should be talking to you because they came to you. You shouldn't even be going to nobody to talk to them doing no presentations no more. That stuff is dead. That stuff is old. Cold calling people are like, why in the world would you be doing that country stuff? We're in 2023. This is not 1983. What is you doing on the phone cold calling people? That don't even make sense. Why would you be wasting time like that? Haven't you done something? Haven't you served somebody? So when you serve people, people select you. You don't select them. They select you. I'm teaching you today how to be sought after in the, in the marketplace. And the way to get sought after in the marketplace is you got to send out strong signals about who you are. All right. And, and whatever the price is you got to pay for sending out that signal, pay it. Don't change the signal. Make sure it's strong, just like Ruth's signal is right here. While she's talking to Naomi, she said, I'm not changing my signal. I don't care what you said. I still mean what I said. I made a decision to hang out with you. The decision means I didn't cut off all other possibilities. I am not confused about what I'm getting ready to do. I'm doing this on my own accord. I am with you, Naomi, to the day one of us die. I am stoned now with you like four flat tires. I'm coming on my own fruition. I want to do it. I'm glad to do it. I'm happy to be here. I am not reluctant. It ain't nothing but death going to separate us. Man, please, brother and sister, do you know how we would dominate life if we would come to one another like that? I'm telling you, all of our lives would change because we wouldn't be in no half, no half baked, half hearted relationships. So what happens? So they get back to the crib and now. Naomi says, man, I'm going to introduce you to somebody. I got a kinsman and he rich. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Verse number, chapter number two. So they get back to, to Judah and, and Naomi had a kinsman, her husband of her husband, a mighty man of wealth, real rich, plenty of printed uh, paper with pertinent presidents on it. That galloping gold, that cheddar to make your cheese. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? And, and Ruth the Moabite, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite, he said unto Naomi, she said, let me now go to the field and glean corn, ears of corn after him in whose sight I should find grace. And she said unto her, go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hat was to the light, and her hat was to light on a part of the field belonging to Boaz, and who was the, uh, who was the kindred of, of, of uh, Elimelech. 
And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, um, the Lord be with you. And they answered unto him, the Lord bless thee. Then Boaz said unto his servants that were set over the reapers, whose damsel is this? Man, let me tell you something. When you make up your mind, when you send a signal out and you stick to your guns, man, let me tell you what God got in store for you. God got so much in store for you until the first thing people are going to start asking is, man, who are you? Man, who are you? Where did you come from? Man, did you just drop out of heaven? I mean, when you start sending signals out about who you are, what you stand for, everybody started finding out about it. Are you listening to me? You don't have to go out seeking nobody. Everybody come looking for you. Why? Because the signal is so strong. What signal did she send out? She sent out a signal that I am selfless. She sent out a selfless signal. She said, let me go into the field and start gleaning. Man, when you work hard, everybody finds out about you. When you got good work ethic, you know, people come for, do you know how hard it is to find people with good work ethic? It's hard today to find somebody that does the same thing day in and day out and day in and day out, got consistency and got a moral fiber and got what a constitution and got a way of doing things that they stick to from hell to high water and they ain't selfish. That's hard to find. People are looking for you all over the marketplace if that's you. Are you hearing me? When he when she went out there and started gleaning, oh my God, when she started gleaning, she started glowing. Are you listening to me? If you start gleaning, you will start glowing. Are you, are you picking up what I'm putting down? This man walked up and said, man, who's that lady? Who's that lady? He said, beautiful lady. Who's that lady? Fine lady. Who's that lady? He said, man, who is that woman? Now, in fact, he didn't just say, who is she? He said, whose is she? <laughs> Why? Because he wants to recruit her. He wants a what? He's a rich man in the marketplace looking for who? Somebody exactly like Ruth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He said, whose is she? Who does she belong to? Why? Because he said, I'm in the marketplace, bro. I'm in the marketplace. I'm ready to do business. I got a question for you. Who's asking that question about you today? What kind of signal are you sending out today where somebody in the marketplace is with a serious bankroll? I'm talking about plenty of cheddar, cheddar make you cheat. Who's walking around like this right now saying, man, uh, who are you? Uh, what's your, oh, Sister Mary. <laughs> what's your, oh, Brother Derek. All right, okay. Oh, oh Brother Harold. All right, oh, Sharita. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Oh, Brother Stan. <laughs> Who's got a bankroll right now waving it and waiting for somebody exactly like you that they can give it to, that I, they want to do business with you. They just waiting to do business with you. Why? Because you got that kind of a, because you're selfless. Because let me tell you, not, not walking around taking selfies. I mean, that's why you got to teach your kids. These kids that feel entitled, they walk around all day long doing this stuff. I'm like, no, 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 no. See, you ain't gonna make a dollar in the marketplace. Why? Because you selfish taking selfies. All right. This this girl, this woman is taking care of her business. She in a strange land, don't nobody know her, but the boy, but her reputation is spreading fast. Why? Because she came out here and she went to work. Now you know she fine. You know she fine. You know Ruth fine. But she ain't sitting around taking selfies. This girl get out in the field, get on her hands and knees and start working. Start gleaning and doing the things you're supposed to do in the barley field. Why? Because she's like, I ain't finna, I ain't finna sit here and try to get by on my looks. Y'all better teach y'all kids. Let me tell you something. You sitting around here thinking you cute, thinking you pretty, taking selfies and all that kind of stuff. That ain't going, that ain't gonna get you nowhere in the marketplace. That don't mean nothing to nobody. What of no with no substance. A person with substance is looking for what's going on on the inside of you. Now, yeah, Ruth was fine. We know because she was blowing Boaz's mind. He said, man. Who's is who does she belong to? In other words, I want to recruit her from the current company she's in. I want to recruit her from the current business that she's in. I want to employ her. I want to give her more than what she currently has. Why? Because she's so busy making it boom, boom, boom and a zoom, zoom. I'm digging this woman. He said, who's that lady? All right. So what they say. All right. So she ain't talking. Listen, when you in the marketplace and you handling your business, your business does the talking. You ain't got to talk. 
I ain't listening to me. She ain't doing no presentation to this man. She is what? Sending signals out and doing what? Serving. All right. So what? She is setting herself up to be selected. That's what I'm teaching you all today. How to signal, how to serve, and then end up being selected. And let's see what happens. Okay. So uh, they asked, who is this woman? And Boaz said, uh, and the servants, um, and the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, it is the Moabitish damsel that came with Naomi out of the country of Moab. Woo! He said, she's the Moabitish woman. And Boaz is like, boy, I'm going to bite that Moab. <laughs> Boaz is like, Moabitish? <laughs> let me in the game, coach. And she said, I pray you, this is what she said. I pray you, let me glean. All right. She said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the, the sheaves. So she came and have uh, continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little, uh, that she tarried a little in the house. All right. So if you want to be in the marketplace, you got to get out the house. All right. If you want to be in the marketplace, you got to send signals that what? I am not lazy. You send signals that what? I am in the room. I am available. Are you listening to me? You got a lot of people that's talented. But the question is not whether you're talented. The question is whether or not you are available. Are you listening to me? And people pay attention to you because people are moved by a person that's available. They're not interested in your unavailable talent. Are you listening to me? It's just like when I meet somebody, they, 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 like I was telling you about the, the gentleman yesterday. He's talking about somebody's somebody being a CEO. And I get a chance to meet the CEO. I'm like, well, I'm not impressed with that. Why should I be impressed with meeting a CEO? We have no connections. That means like nothing to me. I'm not impressed with that. That stuff is not impressing people in the marketplace. That's a bad presentation. Stop doing that. OK, stop trying to make somebody feel like somebody else who they ain't got no connection with is so important. All right. The person should be talking to you because you are important to them. And because you are important to them, maybe they want to meet your friend. All right. But you got to be important to the person. So don't run around trying to ride on somebody else's juice. Make sure you're important to the person. Why? Because of your personal service. People only, only follow you to hear something about somebody else that you're talking about because they got confidence in you. And people, they don't get it. They're like, man, I can't recruit nobody into what I'm doing. I'm like, that's because you haven't served anybody and you ain't got nothing coming because people are not going to follow you across the street until you get until you do some service. This woman said, he said, what is, where does this woman come from? She said, well, she came over to us and asked because she has some work. So we put her to work and she ain't even, she don't even hardly stay in the crib. She been, she ain't hardly been in her house. She been out here from morning to evening. This fine woman is out here sweating from morning to evening. She ain't out here trying to get by, get by on her looks. Are you listening to me? This woman is a, this woman is a, is diligent. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So Boaz is like, man, I'm liking her more and more and more and more. See, there's a, a chemical in the brain. It's called dopamine. And in the marketplace, when you really got it going on, you kick a bunch of dopamine into a person's brain. And that, that's what, that's the, the drug of desire, the drug of anticipation. It's in the brain, all right? It anticipates something good is about to happen. So when you're in the marketplace and you send sending a strong signal of service to people, they're thinking, if I hook up with you, man, things are going to really be better for me. That's the way people feel about you in the marketplace. And you kick off that dopamine in their head and you ain't asking them for nothing. They just observing your behavior in, a, in the marketplace. Are you listening to me? So if you want to be an attractive person, if you want to be a person who gets people coming after you and seeking you, just start serving in the marketplace for no money. All right. Just start serving. Just put your products out. Put out your videos, put out your books and put out. You know, put out some things that don't even cost nobody nothing. Just start serving without even charging and get a sample size. So everybody has started up telling people about who you are. That's how things happen in the marketplace. Things happen in the marketplace because they are speaking on this woman's behalf. <coughs> he asked them, who's who is this woman and where is she from? Who does she belong to? And they said, well, they start speaking on her behalf. They testify for her. Are you listening to me? This is how the marketplace goes. You serve, you serve, you serve. And then people start doing what? Sharing your videos. People start doing what? Sharing your testimonies. People start doing what? Say, you ought to listen to this brother. You ought to listen to this sister. This brother, this sister is an amazing amount of help. All right. And then what happens? The person is like, okay, they start listening for themselves. And then they start what? Forming their own opinions. 
And then they start seeing what? This person is talking about the same thing every day. Every time I see them, they send in the same signal. So some people love you and some people hate you. That's what signals are for. They're supposed to be make you electromagnetic. It's supposed to draw to you who's looking for you and repel from you who ain't looking for you. That way you don't be in the middle of the pack messing with people who are in la-la land. What's la-la land? La-la land are, are uncommitted people. Are you hearing me? Many guys have come to you with their lies and you pass them by. Ooh, la 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 means it means what? Ain't nothing about to happen. <laughs> la 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 means ain't nothing gonna happen. It means that what? It's a complete waste of time. It's an exercise of futility. There's a whole bunch of uncommitted folk around here. Why? Because everybody's in la-la land. So how do you avoid that? You make sure that you have a signal that's so strong and to the people who love you, they come at your signal. And the people who hate you, they, they talk about you like a dog when they leave. And you're like, good. All right, good. So now we got an understanding. No, neither one of us like each other. And that's good. All right, that's a good signal to send. Are you listening to me? Just so the people who like you, they really love you. People who hate you, they really hate you. Now you can move on with your life, all right? That's the way it's going to be until the day that you die. Some people are going to love you. Some people are going to hate you. Are you hearing me? I was talking to one guy so naive. One day he told me, he said, Brother Rick, I, ain't. I told him, God bless you to have the victory over all your enemies. So he said, Brother Rick, I ain't got no enemies. I said, man, you one of the most naive cats I've ever seen in my life. Did you fall on the side of the road and hit your head on something? Everybody got enemies. You got enemies. Even if you trying to kiss everybody's butt and get along with them, you still got enemies. Some many, some people, you got enemies because people don't like you because you kiss their butt. <laughs> so, so, so why don't you have some enemies? Give them a real reason to hate you. Why? Because you're so busy doing good. You're so busy handling your business. You're so busy making it rain like a hurricane. Give them a real reason to hate you. All right. Make it where they hate you for real. Why? Because you're so stomped down like four flat tires serving. When you serving, people going to hate your guts. What? They hated Jesus. What they hate Jesus for? Tell me one reason somebody had a legitimate reason to hate Jesus. All right, I rest my case. What, they hate him because he raised somebody from the dead? What, because he put somebody's eyeball back in his head? Why, because he spit on the ground and made somebody gave back their sight? Why, because he took a woman who was at the well and gave her the kind of water that'll never make her thirsty again? Why, what they hate Jesus for? Why, because he was walking on water? What, they, they got mad because he went one moon walking? People don't need no reason to hate you. People hate you just because you got up out the bed because people are what? Hateful. Because people are in darkness and, and in the middle of witchcraft. So that's going to happen. That's just life. So you don't sit around waiting on the wicked witch of the West to approve you. Are you listening to me? You get ready to write a book and you say, excuse me. Hello. Yeah. Hello. This is this, uh, Brother Rick. Yeah. How you doing? I'm like, cool. Who am I speaking to? The wicked witch of the West. I'm like, oh. Okay, all right. Well, what's going on? What you doing? Riding around on brooms. What you think? Well, I was getting ready to, to write another book. You know, I got a new book called Unmovable, Unshakable, Unstoppable. I was just wondering, you know, can I get your amen? What? Can you get my own? Can, can I get your amen on that book? You know, it's a new book I'm putting out. I think people will get a lot of blessing out of it. You better not do nothing like that. Why in the world you want to be talking about being unmovable, unshakable, and unstoppable? People are messing around to get some courage listening to you. I rebuke you in the name of all my demons. <laughs> Why in the world would you call the wicked witch of the West or the wicked warlock of the West trying to get them to agree with you? They're supposed to hate you. What's wrong with you? Why in the world you want their approval? You can't have their approval and then be doing something good. Are you listening to me? If you're going to be doing something good, you do not have the approval of people who hate your guts and, and, and are enemies of what's good. Are you listening to me? Most people are anti-Christ. So if you fuck Christ and you're talking to somebody that's anti-Christ, that means that they're against Christ. Who in the world going to be with you and they're against God? You got people hate God. If a person hate God, then of course they hate you. They better hate you if they hate God because if they hate God and they cool with you, then some that, that don't mix, that don't match up. Woe unto you when all men speak well of you. That's the signal that you have to send out. The signal is that I don't need your approval to do nothing. And I don't care what you think. See, that's a strong signal. Send it out and send it out every day. If you start sending that signal out, you'll stop caring about what people think. And then you'll get so much more accomplished in the marketplace. Why? Because a lot of y'all stuff is not even in the marketplace. Why? Because you're so scared of people. You ain't even put your stuff into the marketplace. 
You got a book, but don't nobody know about it but you. You got a song, but you ain't never sang in no place but in the in the um in the um, shower. You got all kind of amazing gifts inside of you, bursting at the seams, you know, but ain't don't nobody know nothing about it. Why? Because you don't want to send your signal out because you're afraid of how it's gonna be received. It's supposed to be loved and hated. All right. It's a thin line between love and hate. Boom, boom, boom. It's a thin line. Man, it's a thin line between love and hate. All right, are you listening to me? So what? Push people over the line all the time. That's why I love Naomi when she first started. She said, oh, y'all shouldn't come with me. She said, you should not come with me. Go home. All right? Enjoy the rest of your life. Bounce. Have a great day. I love you. I ain't got no attitude with you. Go ahead. See, that's a strong signal to send. You know why that's important? Let me tell you. The reason that's important is because when you make propositions to people, and when you train people on what it is that you're doing, and when you put your product into the marketplace, you have to remove yourself from the result and the outcome of whether somebody wants it or not. You have to take yourself totally out of that. You have to be where I don't even care whether you buy it or don't buy it. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, and really mean that too. Buy it or don't buy it. Buy it if you see value in it, or don't buy it if you don't see no value in it. All right. Why? Because we're not even going to have no conversations about no discounts. You know, that's a, I don't give nobody no discounts. You say, dang, Rick, you don't give nobody no discounts? Yeah, because my signal in the marketplace is a strong signal. I help people get back four times their bank deposits. Now, if you know how to get back four times your bank deposits, go power to you. Go ahead and do it. If you don't, then you want to learn. You want to come over to My Financial IQ Challenge and learn what we do. All right. That's what that's what we do that at, at myfinancialiqchallenge.com. That's where you can learn how to get down like we get down. All right. So that's my signal. And that's it. OK, so they say, Ricky, I'm on a discount. I say the only discount you're going to get from me is you can diss what I'm telling you and you ain't going to count this money. That's my signal. All right. And if you if you down with that, you're down with that. If you're not, I don't look, I, I didn't even think about it no more. I don't I don't chase nobody down trying to get them to do no business with me in the marketplace. That is so unbiblical. That's not the way I live my life. Why would you live a life that's serving people and signaling to people? And then, and when it comes time to select, you are trying to force somebody to do something. It's a selection committee, meaning that the person ought to be glad to be selected into whatever it is that you're doing. And they will be if your signal is strong enough and if your service is amazingly radiant. People love service. Are right? you here? People are attracted to servants. People love people who say the same thing all the people love a consistent person. People love that. Are you hearing me? That's very attractive in the marketplace. Extremely attractive in the marketplace. People will follow you all over the world if you won't, if you stop changing your tune. Let, let me tell you why it's so important for your signal to be constant. It's because if you're going to have followers, where are they going to follow you? If your signal is, what's your name? Good morning. If somebody call your office today, all right? You say, good afternoon. How you doing? They say, I was just calling in because I heard that you are in the marketplace and worth following. All right, cool. Welcome to East West Incorporated. You're like, huh? Welcome to East West Incorporated. East West Incorporated, what that mean? Yeah, you know, the way we get down is sometimes we go east, sometimes we go west. Sometimes we go east, west at the same time. So you're like, east, west at the same time. They're like, yeah, that's what we do around here. You're down, you're in, you're in, you're coming along, you're with us or what? You say, well, Mr. East, West, if I followed you east 15 miles, and then I followed you west 15 miles, where will we end up? Let me see. Let me see how good I am at, at uh, geography. Let me think here. 15 miles west, and then you come back 15 miles east. Well, if you follow me, you're going to end up right where you started from. <laughs> Do you see how delirious that is? That's delirious. It's delirious to be in the marketplace telling somebody to follow you what? Around in circles. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? That's why your message got to be, I'm going east, brother. If you're going east, follow me. I'm going east, sister. If you're going east, follow me. All right? I'm going west, brother. If you're going west, follow me. All right? If you're going north, follow me. But, fo but how do you follow a person who what? Going in two directions at the same time. And that's the way messages sound when you send out these what? Mixed signals. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I'm teaching you today how to signal, 
how to serve and how to select. When you send out the same consistent signal, do the same consistent service, then people select you. You don't select them. You decide who's what money you want and whose money you don't want. That's the reality of life. That's what the Bible is teaching us. And that's the way you can live your life. I ain't talking about what I heard. I'm talking about what I know. All right. I got thousands, tens of thousands of dollars worth of checks just sitting in here right now to, to be cash. All right. Why? These are sick. These are these are um, signals that people sent back to me saying, hey, I'm selecting to do business with you. And I get to them. I cash them when I get time. Why? Because I select whose money I want because I'm too busy working every day. Some of you all, I've been knowing y'all for years and I've been talking to you. I'm like, look, when are you going to put your products in the marketplace? When are people going to find out about you? And why do you keep starting and stopping? And why do you keep going north and then south and then east and then west? You just ending up right back where you started from. And you know what you're killing? You're killing your momentum because momentum is how money is made. You make money because you get that flow going. All right. But how are you going to get a flow going if your signal is so inconsistent? You can't get a flow going. Why? Because you don't even you don't even know if your signal ain't the same. You don't even know who you want around you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You don't even know who you want around you if you ain't got the same signal. This woman knows what she wants. She wants what? This rich man. She wants what? This chase man. She wants she wants Boaz. She knows what she wants. Oh, yeah. She knows what she wants. She knows what she wants. So what? So she goes out in the field <clears throat> that's close to Boaz's field. Are you listening to me? And she work all day. That's a strong signal, brother. That's a strong signal, sister. Ruth knows this idea of signaling, serving, and being selected. Watch what happens. So she's working all day long, and then let's find out what happens. So uh, so Boaz, uh, he saw what was going on, and uh, then Boaz said unto Ruth, he says, uh, hearest thou not, hearest thou not, my daughter, go not to glean in another field, Neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. He said, let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap and go thou after them. Have not, have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art of thirst, go unto the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Man, please. I, I wish I had time to really teach this because we've been talking for a while. I wish I had time to, do you see what happens? When you got a consistent signal and consistent service, do you see what happens? The person of wealth, they come to you. It's people right now. They got so much money. They looking for you if you fall into these categories. I mean, this man is talking to her with a big, thick, seriously fat bankroll, talking to Ruth and like, look, baby, don't go nowhere else. All right. Stay close right here. All right. And, and, and I'm going to set you up. I'm about to protect you so that you ain't got to worry about none of these little dudes meddling in your business. Nobody over here trying to come at you and all. Don't worry about it. I got juice and, and, and I am your protection. You ain't got to worry about nothing. You just you just go ahead on and, and get to work. I got you covered from head to toe. You can relax while you're working. See, it's hard for you to relax when you won't put the right signals out because you don't have nobody around you who got no juice. It's so many people looking for a person like Ruth. My question is, is that what kind of attitude do you have? Don't go soliciting nobody. Don't ask nobody for their money. Put yourself, put your service out. And then the person with the money will come to you and ask you. But I, I, listen to me. I'm telling y'all, this happens to me. I, people know I'm rich. So people are always just sending me messages about money, this and that, this and that, this and that. I'm like, that's the wrong signal. That's the wrong signal. How did I get rich? I'm not on here telling y'all I'm rich so you can send me signals about give me this and give me that. I'm not on here bragging about being rich. I'm telling you how a poor man from the south side of Chicago eating mayonnaise sandwiches turned into a multimillionaire. I'm teaching you the formula for it today. The formula is, is that I've been live almost every day for all oh, I can't even remember. I don't even know. I don't even keep count. Why? Because I'm a servant. And that means what? I'm going to serve people on a regular daily basis until God tells me to do something different. All right. If God say, stop going live, I'll stop going live. But he's going to have to tell me. Why? Because I love people too much. I love people too much to do what? Not serve them. So I don't have to ask anybody for any money. You ain't never heard me ask nobody for no money. Send me some money. I don't want your money. All right. You say, Ricky, well, how do you make money? People give me, people put money into 
the businesses that we have. Why? Because they want more money back than they put in. They ain't doing me no favor giving me no money. They do themselves a favor. Are you listening to me? This man is looking at Ruth and he is setting her up and he's letting her know, man, I'm going to keep you around here and you ain't doing me no favor hanging out around here. So let me start proving to you um, how much I appreciate your presence by what sharing my resources with you. That's all it is. When you, when somebody meets you and you are resourceful and you got it going on to the break of dawn, they will not let you go. Are you hearing me? Like, hold me tight and never let me go. That's the song he's singing, baby. He's like, hold me tight, girl. Don't never let me go. Why? Because your work ethic is so cold blood. Your service is so amazing. And your signal is coming through loud and clear. So let's let's finish a little bit of this. I'll give you a few more minutes. All right. And uh, pray for pray for my daughter, Shantice. She's going through. I ain't going to go into the details, but she's going through. I'm about to go up here and see her. She's going through. When she don't answer her phone, I mean, she's going through. She's had a lot of physical um, ailments over the years, and she's such a beautiful person and uh, one of my heroes in my life because she's had to deal with a lot of physical pain, and I really admire her, and she is as gracious a human being as you'll ever meet. So pray for my daughter. Her name is Shantice. And when I get off of this phone, I'm going to check on him. All right. I want y'all to pray for him. All right. So Boaz said unto her, he said, listen, um, then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, she said, why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am but a stranger? And Boaz said unto her, it hath fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother in the land of thy nativity and are coming to a people which thou knewest not heretofore. Man, this is where I got to park it. He said, woman, he said, everybody know how you treated Naomi. Everybody know you left all you had. Everybody knows how you keep covenants. Everybody knows. It. Everybody know how you swore to your mother-in-law you're going to die in her land. Everybody knows that. And you know what? I am amazed. I am thoroughly enthralled. I am. You have knocked the socks off of me. I'm, you have blown my mind. Why? Because that signal is so strong. That signal of what? Loyalty. That signal of what? Single-mindedness. That signal of what? Dedication. It came across to me so strong until I just want to boom, boom, boom and a zoom, zoom with you, girl. I'm going to hook it up. I, I, I just want you to be my wife. I'm so... I want a person in my life like that. I want a person in my wife. This man is rich, all right? You know, they had more than one wife back in the day. So chances are he got one or two or three or four already, whatever. But he like, I ain't got nobody like you, all right? It's just like people. When they're rich, they already got a company. They already got people working with them. They already got folks that's got it going on. But when they meet you and they see the amazing signal that they see your loyalty, how you done stuck in there, that's why a person needs to see you more than once, more than twice more than three times in the marketplace. Well, I have one of my clients told me, he said, Brother Rick, he said, I didn't even know you um, sell trust. He said, I was just listening to you talk for six months while I ride around the country in my truck. I said, that's a blessing. I said, I'm glad you got something out of it. He said, uh, and then one day you just started talking about you do trust. And uh, he said, so I just signed up right away so I can learn how to get me a tax-free trust. I said, okay, that's cool. All right. He said, but what's my point? My point is that he was like, I didn't even know that's what you did. He said, so when I found out what you did, he said, but what I do know about you is that you done blessed me around the world while I'm driving and gave me a bunch of uh, wisdom about life. You know, so, you know, so that's why I'm down with what you're down with. All right. And he's a uh, blessing. Now he's in a group and he's helping people um, get business credit on the, out of their trust because he, 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 he learned a whole bunch of stuff. I ain't even teaching nobody because iron sharp as iron. He learned it on his own once he became part of our group. That's the whole point of creating groups so that you get the combined wisdom of people and live through masterminds and make a lot of money. Why? Because we all working together and you got ideas I don't have. And, uh, and I have ideas that you don't have. And at that level, you start making a whole lot of money. That's how I had a million dollar day. And um, I was able to get a award for having a million dollar day in just one day. It's the culmination of things. It's the momentum of things. It's what happens to you over a period of time by what signaling and serving. And it's just the aftermath of it. It's just, it's just the byproduct of it. It's just a manifestation of it. It happens. And it's inevitable that it happens. What? When you keep doing the same things over and over again and keep having the same signals. So stop focusing, trying to get somebody to buy something from you. And don't, don't you dare ask nobody for their money. 
What you do is, is that you send out singles that make the person bring you their money. And then you decide whether or not you want to accept it or not. So he, he tells the young lady, I want to marry you. You know, I want to kick it with you. He said, let me check out my other kinfolk and see if they're down. So he goes to his kinfolk and say, hey, man, you closer to her kin than I am. You want this woman? He's like, oh, no, man. And uh, I, I ain't no kind you know, I ain't trying. Do you want this woman? Do you want this land? He's like, no, nah, I don't want the land because if I get the land, I got to have a woman. He's like, yeah, the woman come with the land, bro. He's so my man. He glad my man turned the land down because he want the woman. He more concerned about the woman than he is the land. And let me tell you something. People more concerned about you than they are your product. Are you hearing me? The way people get your product is because of you. The reason that people buy general life insurance is because Shaq, he what endorses it. Are you listening to me? The reason that people buy everything that they buy is because of the people that endorse it. The reason people got on Nike gym shoes is because they see Michael Jordan on the shoe. What? Because he served people for years and years, every two hour, two hours a day, two hours a night for years at a very high level, sending the same message back and forth on a regular basis. What? That I operate at the highest levels of excellence. All right. I dunk on you. I shoot a three point on you. I slap your stuff out of bounds. I play when I'm sick. I play if I don't feel good. Played 82 games the last the last year he played when he was 40 years old. He still played 82 games. Are you listening to me? He's like, I would play for free. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's how you draw people to you in the marketplace because they see you so good at what it is that you do. You so in tune with what it is that you do. You so convicted about what it is that you do. You so excellent in what it is that you do. That's why our motto is stellar is and stellar does because what we do, we really good at, it, at what we do at what we know how to do. And we don't waste a whole lot of time trying to do a whole lot of other stuff because we don't want to saturate what we already good at because that sends what? A mixed signal to the market. So you always hear me talking about the same things. You may say, Ricky, I've heard you talk on several occasions and some of the things you said several times. I would say to that, that's absolutely true. The reason I would agree with you is because the way that you learn and, some, and one of you all put it up here a little earlier, it's through repetition. That's how you learn. That's how everybody learns. So you're not going to hear me talk about um, a long, wide variety of stuff that you never do. You hear me teach the same principles over and over and over again until what? Until you do them, because these are the principles that made me rich. And it's the principles that's going to make you rich, too, if you do them. Why? Because that's why my book is called Bible Principles. Where, where's my book? So some of you all know I got a new book. Some of y'all don't. So if I was you, I would get this book. Hold on a second, and then I'm going to pray for you. So some of you all, you haven't seen my book, so it's called Unmovable, Unstoppable, Unshakable. Unmovable, Unstoppable, Unshakable. I would get this book if I were you. And the reason I would get it is because it's Bible principles that guarantee you financial success. Bible principles that guarantee you financial success. One of these principles is signaling, serving, and selecting. And it's, it works for everybody, all right, because they're principles. And a principle, it works like 24 hours a day. A principle is always 100% correct. A principle never gets sick. A principle never calls in because it's tired. A principle never starts tripping. A principle never disrespects you. A principle never lies. A principle is never two-faced. A principle is extremely dependable. So if you want to be, if you want to get rich, yeah, what you ought to hire are principles. Okay. Learn the principles that make you rich because God doesn't make you rich. He gives you wisdom that produces wealth. All right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says he gives us wisdom that produces wealth. The money is not the money. The money is the wisdom. So get the wisdom and you can't help but have the money. Practice the principles of the Bible. They teach you so much about money, teach you so much about life, and they teach you so much about money. All right. Bible principles, unmovable, unstoppable, unshakable. Unmovable, unstoppable, unshakable, unmovable, unstoppable, unshakable. 
Bible principles that guarantee you financial success. If so, if you're interested in that book, it's in my bio on, on uh, Instagram. If you're interested in that, all right, just go to my link tree and you can order one. All right, let me pray for you all. And one more announcement. And the last announcement is that we will be having a free mastermind class coming up Tuesday, um, October the 24th at 11 o'clock a.m. on million dollar words. I'm going to break down to you all these words that are in the Black's Law Dictionary. This is one of the books that I teach people out of. Black's Law Dictionary. All right, the 11th edition. I highly recommend that you get this book, the Black's Law Dictionary, the 11th edition. It has words you've never seen in your life. And these are multi-million dollar words. It's a language that you don't know anything about. Nobody talks about it. It's like the good old boys club. The 1% of the people that own most of the money on that own control most of the money in the world are familiar with all of these words or familiar with um, a lion's share of these words, I should say. And you can be familiar with them too. And uh, for example, one word I'm going to teach you about is the word add some, A-D-S-U-M, add some. And the word add some, it means I am here, I am present, meaning that I'm all the way here, I'm all the way present. I'm here with you and I'm nowhere else. That's one word that you'll learn uh, in our class. And the reason I'm teaching you that word is because the reason that people don't have money is because they aren't engaged in one thing at a time. They're trying to do this and trying to do that and trying to do this and trying to do that. And it's a, then people live very duplistic lives. But the word add some, A-D-S-U-M, it means I am here. I am present. I am here 100 percent with you. That's why when I'm talking to people on the phone and they have an appointment with me, I'm not talking to anybody. I'm talking about an appointment. We got a scheduled appointment. All right. And somebody else tries to call me. I will not answer my phone. Why? Because I have an appointment with you and only you. If I have an appointment with somebody, a scheduled appointment is $50,000 an hour for me to have an appointment with somebody. So if you call me and we got a scheduled appointment, I'm not talking to anybody else but you. All right. If we have an appointment for some other reason, like you're in my inner circle or something like that, then we have appointments as part of what we do for people that's in the inner circle. And um, and I, I don't play around with my time and I don't let people do me like that. Why? Because I'm an all in brother and I only mess around with people who are all in. So I've had times where people have had an appointment with me. We schedule an appointment and then somebody calls them and they think they're so important until they ask me, can I hold? And they put me on hold. I hang up on them. And they said, what? They said, you, they said, but they called back. They say, brother Rick, uh, I let it go to voicemail. Then they text me and they said, brother Rick, the phone got disconnected. I say, the phone didn't get disconnected. I hung up on you. I hung up on you because you're rude. Because we got an appointment. How dare you be talking to somebody else while you're talking to me? I didn't do you like that. I don't have you. On. Listen to me. This bipolar behavior, it produces an amazing amount of poverty because it's rude. It's not considerate. It's not thoughtful. It's not of God. It's not godly. It's franticness. Are you listening to me? It's impatience. And I'm amazed at people who are impatient with stuff that they ought to be patient with and patient with stuff that they shouldn't be putting up with. I'm amazed. You ever see somebody? They ride in. And they ride up on you, almost run you off the road, and just to be sitting at the same light. And you're like, this impatient mark almost killed me. I mean, my life was almost over because this jerk acting like they got to have all the road. And they ride up here like that. And then you follow that dude to the crib. And he'll watch TV for eight hours. Or he'll gossip on the phone for eight hours. Or he'll watch The Housewives of Atlanta for eight hours. Or he'll be watching football for eight hours. He'd be doing a whole bunch of other stuff that don't move the needle for eight hours and almost killed you a few minutes ago. So he had no patience to let you ride on the road without trying to run you off the road. But he got plenty of patience with foolishness. And that's why the word add some is one word I'm going to teach you all about. One word that you will learn from out of the Black's Law Dictionary. It'll teach you how to be a stable person because the Bible says an unstable man is a, a, a double minded person is unstable in all their ways and definitely broke. Broke people are double-minded people. Broke poor people. It's a curse. It's a curse of what? Arrogance, a curse of indifference, a curse of what? Narcissism, a curse of passivity. It's a curse. It ain't got nothing to do with the Bible. It's totally against the Bible principles. And when you go against the Bible principles, you get exactly what you deserve. Confusion, delirium, chaos, and brokenness. That's what that's why people live like that. So I don't I don't get out like that. I don't let people bring their chaos into my life and let, let, let people's emergencies become my urgencies. I'm like, you're too casual with the way that you behave. You don't have enough respect for another human being. And you expect 
to have all this blessing and all this stuff to happen to your life. You're in a fantasy world. All right. In this life, you got to be deliberate and intentional about what it is that you do. So if you want to learn these words and you want to learn how um, to use them in your life, I'm going to teach you for free. It's going to be Tuesday at 11 o'clock a.m. And I, I put in our email here in case you want to um, in case you're on Facebook or you're not on Instagram. So if you're on Facebook or if you're on um, YouTube, go ahead. Stellar Wealth Management. I'll for you all. Write this down, Stellar Wealth Management. Um, so you can just send us an email, info at stellarwealthmanagement.com. So you just send us an email there and, uh, and we'll send you the link. Now you can invite your friends, you can invite your family, and I encourage you to invite everybody and, um, and to make sure that you're there on time because it's just a matter of first come, first serve when we get there. And these classes, they fill up real fast. And um, so first come, first serve. First people to register and the first people to get there on time, you'll be the ones that will be allowed into the class. All right, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this afternoon for allowing us, Lord, to understand this concept of signaling, serving, and selecting. We thank you for Ruth. What an amazing life. We thank you for Naomi. What a rate, what an amazing life. We thank you, Lord, that Ruth, that she stuck to her guns. We thank you, Lord, that she was willing to walk into a precarious situation, not understanding how things were going to work out, but just by faith and just believing in the same God that Naomi had. She was so impressed with Naomi, Lord, until she was just willing to follow her wherever she went. Lord, we pray that we'll have that kind of influence on people. Help us to be so peaceful and so gentle. And to people just want to follow us because the God that gave us the peace and the gentle disposition, they want that same God. Lord, help that to be our testimony today. We ask in you, Lord, to help us to lift you up so you can draw all men unto you. And then we thank you, Lord, that Ruth had such an industrious attitude, was such a diligent woman until she went out and gleaned in the field. We thank you for her amazing example of being sticking to her guns. And then, Lord, just getting out there and just putting herself in the marketplace. And then, Lord, serving at such a high level in the marketplace until a man came and selected her. And what happened? She ended up being what? In the lineage of David, being David's what? Great grandmother. And then what? In the lineage of Jesus Christ. Ruth is a woman, a, a superstar in the hall of fame, what? Of important people. Um, all throughout the ceaseless ages of time. Ruth, we thank God for Ruth. We thank God for her and everything she represents. And Lord, we want to be like Ruth. We want to have that testimony that when we're dead and gone 100 years from now, 200 years from now, however much time is left on this earth, Lord, we pray that our memory would be like that. Somebody who was pleasant, somebody who was a servant, and people love to get around and sought after us. Lord, help that to be our testimony. And we know we're going to make plenty of money. We know that's no problem because you said to seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness and all that stuff will be added into us. That's ours. That's our benefits. That's the manifestation of what it is that we do. And we just want to thank you, Lord, that you always keep your word. So as we leave today, we pray for traveling mercy. We pray for my daughter, Shantice. We pray, Lord, that you bless her right now. If she's listening, bless her sweetheart, Lord. And Lord, um, uh, build her up, take her out of any depression that she's dealing with, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be able to help me to be able to hug and kiss her and uh, be able to uh, speak life into her life, Lord. Help us um, to enjoy the tremendous relationship that we have, Lord. Keep us both here for many years to come as our prayer. Lord, we know that it's up to you to do what it is that you want to do, but that's our prayer. And Lord, we know you heard that prayer and we believe that you're going to honor it. And we just pray that you bless everybody here today who's sick, everybody here who's in any, in any pain listening right now. Everybody here who's representing anybody who's sick and pain, anybody here whose heart is broken, anybody here who's um, depressed, downtrodden, anybody here who's homeless, anybody here who's struggling, anybody here, Lord, who's uh, going through right now. We pray, Father, that you would um, send the angels of comfort, send the angels, Lord, of uh, mercy and peace. And Lord, that you would help us and make us alert about what's going on with one another so that we we'll reach out to each other and help build each other up from the inside out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Enjoy the rest of your beautiful Saturday. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. A wonderful, wonderful weekend. Be blessed in the city. Be blessed in the field. I love y'all. Ain't nothing you can do about that. And remember that stellar is a stellar does. Have an outstanding day. And thank you so much for your prayers. We appreciate you. All right. God bless you. Have an awesome day. Thank you. God bless you. A wonderful day. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's very kind of me.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.